Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the Anchor Rove Dashcam C2. So this is the third dash cam from Anchor and the two previous ones I have reviewed so of course I will provide links down below if you haven't already seen them. And those are the C1 and the C1 Pro. So this one uses a different form factor. The C1 and C1 Pro uses a wedge style camera or form factor that goes right up against the window where this one's more like a typical camera that uses a suction cup mount or adhesive mount. So of course this one does have at least 1080p 30, claims it has superior nighttime clarity because it uses a Sony IMX323 sensor which these days isn't actually that special but it is a pretty affordable camera so Currently, I believe it's about $90 on Amazon, and I did buy this myself. This was not sent to me for review, so I am just trying to give my most unbiased review possible. Here you can see this one goes up to 158 degrees, where if you look at this C1 model, it only goes up to 149 degrees. Now that operating temperature is just going to be an estimate, but basically you don't want to have these in really hot climates because they do use batteries unlike some cameras that use supercapacitors. Now supercapacitors are generally thought of as better in dash cameras but the reason this has a battery is it does have a unique parking mode which I will go over in a bit. Just like the other ones it comes with a nice anchor two port charger. Feels like pretty decent quality. It is mostly plastic but it does feel like better quality than a lot of cheap Chinese cameras. So just like the C1 models, this does come with a couple of the same accessories in addition to that two port anchor charger. So of course we got a manual and some warranty information, the actual camera, a little installation tool to help you get the cords up in your car's headboard, two different mounts. So we have one with the 3M adhesive, so that would probably be installed in your main car, but you get this suction cup mount for perhaps you're on a road trip with a friend or something and they're driving, then you can still bring your dash camera and use the suction cup mount. And I do really like this suction cup. It's really sturdy and feels well made, so I'm glad they didn't use too cheap of a suction cup. And then it uses a micro USB cable for power. So here they are all alongside of each other, the different anchor models. You can see the C1 and C1 Pro look exactly the same. So the C1 models are going to be a lot more discreet in your car. So if you want something that is going to stay pretty well hidden, like maybe you're worried about theft, the C1 models are definitely the way to go. This actually uses physical buttons too, where the C1 cameras use touch screens or touch buttons. So that is another thing to look into. Here's a couple other cameras. This is the Viafo G1WS, which is quite a bit cheaper at only about $55, but video quality wise it's about the same. Just based on the price a lot of people might go with the G1W, but I do have several reasons why I do like the Anchor better, and I'll talk about that. This is the SJ Cam SJ Dash Cam and I was going to do a comparison with this but unfortunately it arrived completely dead on arrival so I'm waiting for a replacement. One thing I really like about this camera and the other anchor cameras is the voice alerts. Please insert micro SD card. Rove dash cam is recording. So I think that's a really useful feature. The G1W cameras don't have anything like that, so if the memory card goes bad and if your camera's behind your mirror where you can't see it, you might not even realize it's not recording. So those audio alerts are really appreciated. And of course you can watch your files on the camera. You can also do this on your phone with the C1 models because those have Wi-Fi, but unfortunately this C2 model does not have Wi-Fi. I'm sorry if the menu isn't showing up very well, but the menu is very similar to the C1 models, but again it uses physical buttons instead of touch buttons on the bottom of the screen. 
I prefer the physical buttons of this camera. The only thing that's really missing is the Wi-Fi from the C1 model, and the C1 Pro also has GPS, so other than those two features, this camera has pretty much the exact same menu. Now only the C1 Pro has GPS, so if that's something important to you, then you are going to want to get that model. So when I was talking about the parking mode and the battery, you can see there I just turned on the parking mode, and what's unique about this camera is Power supply it has an automatic parking mode where it'll switch to parking mode as soon as you lose power. Parking monitor mode keeps working. So most cameras that have a parking mode require being hardwired, where this you can just plug right into your cigarette port. So this is really easy, but I will say it's not as good as most parking modes since it requires the sensor to sense an impact. It doesn't start recording till about five or six seconds after, and then you could argue that that doesn't capture the accident, but what it could capture is the person getting out of the car and inspecting the damage, and the video quality is good enough where you could capture their license plate, so I think it's interesting and it's unique, but it does take sacrifices using this non-hardwire version of a parking mode. And again, since it uses a battery, you have to consider how hot it's going to get in your car. If you live in a really hot climate like Arizona, when you park out in the sun for several hours. Memory card is small. Please format card for space. Memory card is full. Please format card for space. Home dash cam is recording. So besides the battery dilemma aside, and the fact that it doesn't have Wi-Fi or GPS, I think the camera is still competitive with the G1WS from Viafo or other cheap cameras under $100 because while the video is only 1080p30, nowadays cameras like the A119 or C1 Pro have 1440p, I think relative to a lot of other similar cameras at this price point or between fifty to hundred dollars it's not great video quality but it's not terrible either I will have some comparisons with some other cameras but overall I think with a Sony image sensor it gets pretty good night quality uh, it's not as detailed as I was hoping it would be but like I said I do have comparisons with other cameras so if you want to see an in-depth or longer in-depth comparison with the C1 and C1 Pro, I would recommend watching my C1 Pro review because I do have quite a lot of clips that show both the C1, C2, and C1 Pro. I also did have someone ask if if the top two videos are as wide as it gets and that's not the case. I cropped them to get three on one screen without having any black space. so. They, all three of them do have very wide angle view, just like the bottom one. I just wanted to crop them so I could fit three in it at a time. So the main comparison I wanted to do is the G1WS to the C2. Now I was sort of surprised. I remember the G1WS looking better than it does here. Maybe it's just been a while and I've been using cameras like the A119 for quite a while now that it just doesn't look that sharp to me. It looks okay it has uh, quite a s bit of softness to it where the C2 on the bottom looks very sharp but when it comes down to it you can't read license plates any better with the C2 so even though the colors look better and I like the sharpness of the C2 I watched a bunch of clips and anytime I could read a license plate on the C2 I also could on the G1WS so for me the video quality is sort of a stalemate. You know, some people have already said they think the G1WS looks better, but like I said, I personally think the C2 looks better just overall because I would argue it's a little too sharp, like it's over sharpened, but with the sharpness and overall better realistic color, I do like the image of the C2 better. But as of now, 
the G1WS on Amazon is $35 cheaper. So if you don't care about those voice alerts and if you don't care about those, uh, the parking mode feature, then the G1WS is still a great camera because it's still probably the best camera under $60. And the other good thing is the G1WS does use a super capacitor. So if you're someone that lives in a hot climate where it's regularly 90 to 100 degrees or even more, then the G1WS is a great option because that super capacitor is going to be able to handle much more extreme hot and cold temperatures too. So it's something to consider. Now I will argue though that just because the C2 has a battery, it doesn't mean it's going to fail. It's more likely to have issues, especially in hot climates. But you also don't have to use the parking mode if you don't want to. That's where you're more likely going to have problems is if you're letting it r continuously stay on in your car while it's ridiculously hot, especially after several hours of being in the sun. That greenhouse effect will really raise the temperature in your car. Now back to the G1W and C2 comparison. I think they're very similar. The color is slightly different. And I think there's moments where the G1W does look slightly brighter. But it's really hard to say. At times my headlights look brighter on the C2, but then in really dark areas I feel like I can see slightly more with the G1W. Like when I passed this dark area on the right side, it did seem like I could see that guy slightly better on the G1W, but it's such a small difference I think it's negligible. So overall, I think if you're comparing the C2 with the G1WS, it's really up to whether or not you want to pay 35 extra dollars for the C2 and if you want that great audio voice alert system or if you want that parking mode. And like I've mentioned multiple times, if you live in a hot climate, you definitely have to consider if this battery-based camera is going to be able to handle that really hot climate. Now I live in Minnesota. It does get up to 100 degrees sometimes and we'll have many days that are in the 90s but it's only a few months of the year and typically you know I don't leave it on running for hours at a time so I don't really have to worry about it but everyone just has to make a responsible decision based on their own situation so overall I personally like this camera more than the G1WS I really like the camera build quality it feels really sturdy and I really like those voice alerts I'm not a big fan of the parking mode because I use Thinkware cameras and I think those buffered parking modes are much better but this is a really cheap camera so I can't really complain when it's under $100. But anyways I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video or my other videos I'd appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. I'll provide links down in the description for all the different cameras I've mentioned in this review if you're interested in purchasing any of them. And as usual, drive safe, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.